I just wanted to give a brief history of all the Macintosh laptops that I have, since the collection seems to be rather large. Now, first off, PowerBook 1400. It was made in 1997, had a 166 megahertz processor, it had 64 megs of RAM, a 2 gig hard drive, a 512k of video RAM, uh, used, utilized Apple Talk, and it had two Type 2 or one Type 3 PCMCA slots for eventually when wireless would come around or if you wanted to use a USB card. It had its super funky uh, SCSI port. It had infrared, which was actually kind of neat. Um, it still utilized Apple Talk, which I think I've already mentioned. Um, screen size, you know, not too great. Single button. Um, still you had the open Apple button on it, which was kind of nice. It had one really neat feature. Well, besides all the other things, the fact and the fact that it kicked ass at its time, you could slide the cover off. So you could put a clear case on here and put your business card there, or you could paint it up however you wanted to, or you can get special customized color shells for it too. It also had the ability to be upgraded to a PowerBook or to a G3 processor um, for about $600. So it wasn't really worth the price in comparison to the cost of the system plus the upgrade, or just going out and getting the new PowerBook G3. Speaking of which. PowerBook G3, sleek, black, used in all major movies at the time. It was in Mission Impossible. Um, I think they used it in Independence Day. You've seen them on Sex in the City. Sleek, aggressive looking. Once again, two Type 2 PCM series slots, or one Type 3, blah, blah, blah. Uh, for, a first for Apple laptops, a little marker on the side, which would actually, if you if I charged it ever, you would be able to tell how much juice the battery has. This one was, uh, let's see, I don't even know, uh, made in 1998, I think a 233 processor, uh, 512 megs of RAM, um, Apple said it could only go up to 384, but two 256 megs 6 seemed to work in it just fine. It had 4 megs of video RAM and a 3.2 gig hard drive. Not really the best thing in the world at the time because there were Dell laptops and, no, not Dell. HP, Compaq, Packard Bell, and Micron uh, was kicking their ass at the time with laptops. So what they do? They made the same thing again, except for some neat little bronze keys, a single PCMCA slot. Why? Because it also utilized Apple Airport Express cards, where you could plug it in, and uh, through wonderful wireless technology that was super revolutionary at the time, you can connect it a whopping 11 megabits per second to, to the wireless. Its antennas were actually located here and here. Um, it was one of the first ones to actually have Firewire and uh, 10100 Ethernet. It had USB 1.0, which for an Apple keyboard, Apple mouse, that was just fine. This one was actually also really neat because it had its own built-in DVD decoder. This system was a, let's see, it says it on the back, it was made in 2000. 400 megahertz with 64 megs of RAM, but I have actually upgraded it to 384 megs of RAM. Um, it had a 6 gig hard drive. I have upgraded it to a 60 gig hard drive just because I want more storage space and it's not that difficult to upgrade these. Um, it had... I don't know. It had a lot of plus sides to it. it this is actually my favorite model. If they were to go out and make another MacBook or power book or whatever the hell they want to call them nowadays. That was this form factor and had the neat little features that, oh, let me just pull this rocker switch and, ah, the battery comes out. I mean, you feel like you're just doing like some James Bond stuff. Ah, oh, sweet, secret compartment when I pull a lever. They're just cool. But, nope, nope, they deviated. And then they started coming up with crap like, like this. The iBook G3 clamshell edition, still single button. Nice little white keys, a single speaker, which that will come back again later on in this talk. Um, one neat thing is, with 802.11b still integrated into these systems, you had wireless antennas here and here, which make a lot more sense, because if you're sitting up and the way radio waves work, they're right there. It's a lot better for you. This particular model was actually a 300 megahertz uh, PowerBook, or iBook G3 with Another 320 megs of RAM, a 6 gig hard drive, 4 megs of video RAM, and 100 megabit Ethernet plus the wireless. Yes, I wrote down notes so I can get all the facts straight because someone's going to be like, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about later. So, 
on to the next thing. iBook G4, uh, 12 inch, made in 2004, 1.33 um, power PC, gig and a quarter of RAM, uh, it comes with 256 megs on board plus a gig chip. Um, let's see, 60 gig hard drive, 32 megs of video RAM, um, 100 megabit Ethernet, and 802.11G. So that was neat whenever they built up, or whenever they bumped up to the Express. Um, once again, neat little battery indicator that there's juice. Plus, they feature a nice little pulse, if it would. Of course not. Anyways, um, another neat thing. Uh, you got a slot load CD drive, or CD burner slash DVD reader. Uh, and all the other ports were on the other side. So... It makes it easy for just putting it on your desk and sliding it up against the wall and being done. <clears throat> so, with that awesome design in hand, what did Apple do? They copied it. PowerBook G4 12. Let's see, uh, one one point five or yeah, one point five gigahertz power PC, two gigs of RAM, hundred gig hard drive, one hundred twenty eight megs of video RAM, uh, gigabit Ethernet, and eight hundred two dot eleven G. So the iBook G4 12 has all the ports on the same side. The only difference is this one has the power socket here. The iBook G4 features it next to the CD drive. Why? I don't care. They relocated the speakers to the back instead of on the keyboard or some area that you could actually hear when the system's open. When you crank this thing up all the way, you might as well be in a very quiet room or have some headphones. So. That is it for all of my PowerPC Apple Macintosh laptops. So what's the next step? MacBook. They got rid of the power name because they got rid of PowerPC. And they stuck with the Mac name because they're Mac and Squash and because and they stuck with the book because I don't know, you could put them on a bookshelf. So they stay with the same form factor though. Slot loading C D drive on one end and all the other ports on the other side. They kind of dug himself into the same hole with only putting speakers on the back, just like with the PowerBook G412, except for this one has a 13-inch screen. So, it's good for playing games, it's good for going online, it's good for doing like iMovie stuff, which this will not be, I will not be doing on this. It's a piece of crap, it'll take like 10 hours to render it out. So, you can install WoW in here in about 20 minutes using the CDs, or you can install it using uh, disk images in about 10. Um, you could also install Windows on here, and they feature built-in video cameras, so that way you can do video chats. Another first for Apple. So, MacBook Pro. I have a nice fancy orange shell on mine, so I don't scratch the crap out of it, because just like all the old PowerBook titaniums and PowerBook aluminums, they scratch like you would not believe. So, nice spec shell on here, keeps it nice and safe. Once again, they've decided to stay with their old form factor like the PowerBook G4s and go with a full-size DVI slot, USB port on one side and another USB port on the other. They dropped the PCMCA slot and went for the Express 34 card slot, which is kind of a pain in the butt because all the wireless cards that I usually have access to are PCMCA. But whatever. The slicker also features Gigabit Ethernet, and it's a 2.33 Intel Core 2 Duo with 4 gigs of RAM, even though Apple says that you could only put 3. Screw them. So, that is it for useful laptops that Apple has put out. So what's left? The MacBook Air. You have a power adapter slot. You have a neat little drop-down hatch that has an audio jack, a USB jack, and a mini DVI jack. That's it for inputs. It features Bluetooth 2.11 EDR, I do believe. Maybe I'm wrong about that acronym. Whatever. Either way, you can plug or you can tether up with a bunch of stuff, except for the iPhone. If I want to put this sucker online through a cell phone, I could do it with my T-Mobile Sidekick. I could do it with an MDA. But for some reason, you can't tether using Bluetooth to an iPhone and go online. Go figure. So, here's the laptop. Once again, single button. Didn't we just go through this 11 years ago? Whatever. So, the trackpad's neat. It features multi-touch technology just like all the Intel Mac laptops. So, if I drag two fingers, it'll, it supports scrolling. Or if I put two fingers on the trackpad and click, 
hit right clicks, or I could put three fingers and do gestures and stuff, or I could put two fingers on and twist to rotate a picture. Really useful. In no way, shape, or form. It has a backlit keyboard, which is kind of fancy, and I really wish that they put it on the regular MacBooks. But they don't. So maybe it's something yet to come. Now, remember with the iBook G3, the single speaker? They did it again. Except for instead of putting a little speaker port somewhere on the computer, no. It's between the P and the bracket button. So if I'm typing away, and I'm just being happy, and oh, chatting on MySpace, and doing instant messages, and putting stuff on eBay, and browsing for crap on Craigslist, then I can hear the music, because your hand actually cups over it. I don't know if that was an intelligent design decision, or just kind of a random fluke that happened. So, go Apple. I don't know. You're pretty lucky. That's it. No. Mad laptops. Bye.